taught colors, you taught syllables. Uh, we were talking about how to hear from God, and I was breaking down uh, how many syllables, how many voice patterns, and how even your uh, voice activated phones work. You know, because it picks up you have 40 voice patterns, you have 26 syllables, and that, that, uh, that phone recognizes those things, and it responds to them. You know what I'm saying? So, so we're taught those things, you know, uh, so we, you know, right now we know book, we know blue, we know this, we know uh, uh, the red stop sign is telling you you need to stop. Um, not roll through the stop like they said I did the other day. Uh, <laughs> but, but that's to help you to navigate in the earth realm. Right but, but, but that doesn't mean you're supposed to ignore the spiritual understanding of how to navigate in the, in the spirit realm. See, Jacob saw a vision of angels ascending and descending in heaven and earth. So we're supposed to live a life on earth as it is in heaven. So we still got to navigate and learn the heavenly stuff. That's what's frustrating us right now because all the earthly stuff ain't, ain't getting us to fulfill. And we, we're ignoring the essential part of our design. We are a spirit. We must worship him in spirit and in truth. And the only way we can do that is the spiritual stuff. So what we do is, we, I mean, you know, some of us, we spend a lot of time reading. Uh, and the people tell me they don't like to read, but they're on Facebook all day. But anyway, <laughs> some people on Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram, is that one now? LinkedIn. Uh, then it, within Facebook, they're on all the other applications where you got, whether it's branched out, I don't know, I've been getting all these little icons, people say, so, so such want you to join in, so I'm like, what is this? So people are on all that, but they say they don't have time to read. So, so you don't have time to, to get what you need, your spiritual food, to fulfill your purpose life. But, but, you, but, but, you, but you do, you got time for ESPN. Reading all the ticket, you know, like, ah, oh, man, I, I can't come right now because I missed something on the ticket that's about to come back. Man, it was on the NFL, man, I'm going to switch to the NBA, so I got to keep, come on, hurry up, rotate so I can, you know, we got all the stats. We know, we know the school the person played for, what was their stats in school, their stats in high school, their stats in middle school, and actually, when they won the, the, the pass, punt, and kick contest, we, we got all that down. But we don't know nothing about Paul. Nothing about Jesus. Mm. Solomon. Greatest man ever lived. Some people know more about Warren Buffett than they knew about Solomon, who was the richest person to ever live. You see, see that all, all I'm saying is, can we get back to what's really going to elevate our lives? Now, I'm not talking about I read a scripture in the morning that popped up on my phone. I mean, look, read that. It does, hey, that's all you're reading right now. Go ahead, please read that. This song. <laughs> but could that not be like, because we ain't going out with nothing else. Can we like really like take some time with God? But I don't have time. I got to study. I know some of y'all in school. Oh, so you ain't, that's all you're doing is study. That's it. No Facebook time, no nothing. That's all you're doing, to study. People checking you, they, they know where you are. I uh, just walked into the Aaron's Christian Center Church today. <laughs> uh, I'm at Ross stores. They got a sale. You know, like, I mean, so, I mean, you stop to check in. Guess, oh, there you go, baby. Could you check in on God? I mean, checking in all day. And you're checking in, checking in your status, posting something. Yeah, I'm at a party right now. You know, I just want to let you. Parties are all right. It's jumping, you know. Well, I'm sitting over at such and such restaurant. They have great coffee. I've had a cup of tea. You know, can we just do that with God? Come on, okay. Well, what y'all, what y'all, y'all mad? <laughs> that's all I'm saying. We, let's do the heavenly stuff. All right, that's not what I was supposed to talk about. Um, yes, it was. Yes, it was. All right. Okay. The scripture says first. Let me get his last. This is actually just supposed to be like a little pregnant. But uh, the scripture says first Timothy six twelve. It says lay hold on eternal life. It says fight the good fight of faith. So if you're gonna fight, fight the good fight of faith. 
fight to put your lenses of faith on so you can see beyond the natural into the spirit realm. If you're going to put up a fight. Then it says lay hold on eternal life. Don't lay hold on the temple. I did a funeral in New Jersey. Uh, the first time I spoke in front of my family. And so, so I was like, okay, well, what you going to say to these folks? First of all, some of them still see me as little Keith. Then, then there's others that still, still see me as that crazy Keith that is tripping. You know, some of them I used to go to the clubs with. And the Lord, he, 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 he said, well, hey, let's talk about eternal life. And what he said was, okay, you got, uh, I'm 50. So, so I was born August 2nd, 1962. Okay, so now we're whatever the date is today. Uh, September 16th. 2012. Um, and there's some people, you know, you look at, when you look on the tombstone, it has a date of when they were birthed, and then it has a date when they left. Between that date, which is called the temporary. Even if you look on somebody's tomb and you see a hundred years, take that hundred years, put it on a scale, put eternity on another scale, the scale will flip over like ten times. We spend all of our focus on the temporary and miss out on laying hold on the eternal. So most of our decisions we're making is for the temporary. We're trying to get some shine in the temporary. How's it working? Working out pretty good for you so far? As opposed to laying hold on eternal life. Spending our time hanging out in the heaven record. That's when those, I'm assuming people know the story, but there was a story where uh, some uh, guys was watching Paul, and Paul was just going around walking in power. See, see, my preaching and teaching was not with enticing the words of man's wisdom, it was a demonstration of the spirit of power. Paul said that in Corinthians, but over in Acts is, is why he could say it. Because he wasn't just walking around going, Jesus, 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 here's a Bible. No, he was like, let me show you Jesus. Let me show you what I got access to. He just, oh, oh. Uh, you saw that dude get up just now when I walked by? That's how Paul was rolling. In there, my shadow did that. Because the Holy Spirit is working in me. That power is working in me. That power that was in Jesus has been transformed in me. And when I walk by somebody because I believe in the power, they're healed. He said, so it was demonstration of spirit and power. You've seen the power working. Now what you got to say? I'm just not talking again. I'm living in the power. That was, that, that was him. And see, so some so guys saw that and they was like, man, that dude was powerful. All right, so he did this. He did, okay, told me elbow, reach in the neck. Told me elbow. I'll just do what he do. Try to mimic it. We cast you out in the name of Jesus that Paul preaches. Now, Jesus, I do not. That's, the demon was like, yeah, we know Jesus. He's been in the spirit realm all the time. He hangs out in the eternal. Paul, we know. He got a badge, too. He got all access in heaven and earth. Man, he always come to wreak havoc in our world. He's in his spiritual authority. You? Dude, we don't know you at all. You ain't got no power. Jumped all over. You ain't never seen the spirit realm. You trying to be like Paul. Not like Christ. What's the difference? Christ stayed connected to God. When a demand was placed on him, he placed it on God. These that, that you've given me, feed them. God can't feed all these people. <laughs> all right, come back. All right. <laughs> I just pictured something. Um, all right, so, so, what was I talking about? All right, so, so, we've been talking about, we were talking about why you can't see, uh, why you can't see what you can't see last week, and I was supposed to give you this part, how we are deceived from seeing what we want to see. You know, what causes our blind spots? You know, we talk about everybody has blind spots. Especially the drivers know this very well, because you're always trying to change lanes, and you think that car came out of nowhere, it didn't come out of nowhere, it was there the whole time, you just couldn't see it was in your blind spot. Well, we have blind spots in our lives. So newsflash, all of you intellectual people that haven't gotten the revelation that Terrence said he got, that he didn't know everything, 
And now he's living a life where every day he's trying to find out what he don't know. Same life I'm living. I'm trying to find out what I don't know, not trying to prove what I do. Because if I just limit myself based on what I know up to this point, okay, that's got me to this point, and it's not total fulfillment, so I want to keep on going and finding out what I don't know, because the more I access myself to, the more I put myself in a position to live a life that I'm not living now. We got that so far, right? All right, good, good, good. All right, so, so, but the reason why we're not doing that is we, we've been deceived. Now, if you knew you was deceived, it wouldn't be deception, right? <laughs> that's the whole point. Deception means we don't know, <laughs> right? Well, uh, what's, what's affected us is uh, what I call uh, your, your, what's, what's been tainted is your spiritual visibility. That's what's been throwing you off, your spiritual visibility. And so we'll use some natural examples to explain, uh, you know, I'm always studying stuff, to explain what's going on with us spiritually. So one of the things that's been deceiving us, what's one of the things that's caused us to deceive, deceive us is spiritual optical illusions. See, optical illusions is, 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 is you know, you, got, you have farsightedness, you have nearsightedness, you have uh, uh, death perception. You know, uh, uh, of course you have what we all want, but very few of us have, 2020 vision. <laughs> you know, now, the interesting thing is 2020 vision is you, 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 you see clearly. Your, your uh, spiritual 2020 vision is you're free from fear and darkness. You're free from fear and you're free from darkness. Because fear clouds you. Obviously, darkness clouds you. Uh, and let's look at 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy 1. So 2 Timothy 1, 7 says, God has not given you a spirit of fear. Full of fear. False evidence appearing real. A bunch of things that are distracting you from real purpose. The reality, the truth. Final reality. He says, but he's giving you power. This is what God imparted into you when you accept Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. Love and a sound mind. See, see, we, the people who read that scripture, God is not giving you a spirit of fear. Okay, but what did he give you? Power, love, and a sound mind, clear thinking mind. 2020 spiritual vision to see your way to purpose. That's what God has given you. So if you can't see your way to purpose, Somebody's infiltrated the mainframe. You've allowed something in that's corrupted the system. So you got to figure out a way to cleanse it out. Now, how do I cleanse it out? Well, the scripture says in John 15, 3, you're cleaning through the word. So the more words you put in, the clearer you see. Psalms 119, 130 says the inches of the word bring it light. It gives understanding to the simple. The simplest person that can't see, it gets understanding. So, if you uh, actually, this is a great example. If we shut our lights off in here, you ain't saying nothing. This place is pitch black. Actually, it was pitch black before we added some lighting. We would add some more lighting. I have an idea. Um, um, but, pitch black. But when you turn the lights on, darkness leaves. Darkness don't go, listen, can I just hang around before? No, no, no. The scripture says in John 1, 5, darkness can't comprehend light, can't master light, can't be in the same room with light. So when you take in the word, you take in light, any darkness in you has to leave. So you get back to that clear thinking mind that can see your way to purpose. So let, let's, uh, I forgot to bring the prop in, but I'll use this bottle. It's plastic, it's not really going to, my example was glass, because glass is made out of sand. We're made out of clay, so that's why I like the glass better. But just pretend this is glass. Um, so this is us. And so if I, I don't have one, but I'm not going to do it right now because I don't have a bunch of water. But if I put an ink pen cap in this bottle, um, if there was no water in there, it would hit the surface, but just this little bit of water in here, it would float on the water. Buoyancy. It would float on the water. So the bottle would be us. The ink pen cap would be the darkness. The water would be the word. So if this was empty, and I put this much water in here, I got more water than I had before, didn't I? Would the pen cap come out? How do I get the pen cap out? I got to fill it up to overflowing. 